Hi everyone, welcome back. So today, after playing the bit of the event, I kind of understand how the whole thing goes. So if you're still confused about it, I'm going uh, to take a little bit to explain it. The whole concept of the event is that you have to repair a plane. And what they mean by that is you have to disassemble the plane to the lowest level and then reassemble it. But there's a bit more variables than just that. So after your first game, you should get a broken I-180S. And then you take that I-180S on a test flight and you try to guess on what is wrong with it. And for every component that you guessed right, you get some more toolkits. And we'll get to those toolkits in a bit. So once you know what's wrong with it, or you assume what you know what is wrong with it, you have to disassemble the vehicle, the I-180S. And the entire plane, it breaks down into parts. And the parts break down into components. And some of the components break down into more components, some of them just stay as a single part. Like the armament, that doesn't break down any further. Even though they could have broken it down to large caliber or small caliber, they didn't want to do that. So that's a bonus, I guess. So you have to break down the components till you find the broken component. And then you can scrap that and get more toolkits. And then what you have to do is you have to replace the broken component, obviously. And how do you get that? randomly and random battles or and i think this is what gaijin intended in the first place is that you buy it off the marketplace however because some of these components have an insanely low drop rate their prices have skyrocketed costing more than vehicles i think the top one is going for like 200 right now that is the worst part of these components the random drops of these new parts and it's complete rng there's nothing to it doesn't matter how well you do in the game it's just you gotta keep playing more to hopefully when day get the part that you're missing so in theory you could actually go through the entire event and never get the thing but i'm pretty sure the drop rates aren't that bad for console players there is an alternative method to gaining parts because you can't use the market and you can purchase a i-180s aircraft recovery manual which for two hours will give you the ability to gain aircraft designer toolkits which three of them you can craft into new components but once you replace the broken component, you gotta put it all the way back together. And what's also really annoying is the parts that you know aren't broken, thanks to the test flights and all that, you still have to examine them. And how do you examine them? You use the toolkits. So essentially, once you have either examined everything or broken down everything to the point where you found the broken component and have replaced it, you, you build it back up to an I-180S and you should get an I-180S coupon or whatever. But to do all this, you're gonna need a lot of toolkits. Aircraft maintenance school toolkits, I believe they're called. These toolkits are more of currency to either examine or transition a component to either not broken or break it down further or build it up. You have to use them to build it up as well. Now how you get these toolkits is you have to spend 10 minutes in game with 50% battle activity. But what this means is that if you have a 15 minute game, you will only get one. But after that 15 minute game, you have a five minute game, you'll get another one. Alternatively, if you have a 15 minute game and then another 15 minute game, the second 15 minute game, you'll get two. The 10 minutes can be built up through multiple games. But you have to have 50% battle activity, but that's not hard at all. It's just you know, participate in the battle. Every 10 minutes, you will get a box that contains a random amount of repair kits. Typically, you only get one. Sometimes you'll get lucky and have one or two. Apparently, you can get 10, but don't count on that. Another way you can get them is by being the top of your team. The person in first place at the end of the game gets a different type of box that contains a random amount of toolkits, typically one, or a skin for one of the event vehicles, which you can sell if you wish to make a little extra gadget cash on the side. The first I-180S that you complete, you can exchange for either the Panzer Toaster or the Russian boat. For the next I-180S that you build, you can either trade for another one of the Tier 1 vehicles, or if you happen to complete two more I-180Ss, you can get one of the Tier 2 vehicles, which are the fancy ones, the JU-88J, Merkava, and the HMS Tiger. Once you have completed three I-180Ss, you can no longer do a flight diagnostic, so you really just have to guess and check to examine every inch of the aircraft. And if you're going to want everything for the event, you're going to have to complete nine I-180S aircrafts. It took me pretty much all day yesterday, and I think I got like halfway 
through the first I-180. Uh, so I played a little bit more and I've gotten forward. I'm almost done with it, I just need to grind a whole lot more. So in a time scale, it is definite that you can get a good amount of vehicles doing the event. If you want all of them, you might have to string yourself within the 10 day limit, but I definitely think it's doable. However, you're gonna have to tell your friends that you're on leave for a while. Well, anyways, you can gain these items, the toolkits and the parts, up until the 22nd of April at 11 GMT time, which is like 4 in the morning PST if you happen to be on this coast. However, the event isn't officially over at that. Until the 29th, you can still sell the extra components you have onto the marketplace, or if they're not selling, you can exchange them for war bonds. And on the 29th, all of them will cease to exist in the game, all the components and everything. That's when the event officially ends. A few strategies on getting these, you gotta think big picture, everybody is partaking and they're trying their hardest because some of these tanks the, the Makrava is a rank 6 people really like free rank 6 tanks so you're gonna see a lot of try hard strategies and try hard vehicles especially the Finnish KV-1 and the German tree. If you don't know about that tank, it's quite overpowered and really hard to kill. So for the most part, I'd say avoid 4.0. A lot of people are there. A lot of really hard to kill tanks are there. 3.0 is kind of a danger zone a bit because you're going to get up tiered a lot into 4.0 and you can't really kill the Finnish KV-1 with a 3.0 tank. Though if you're crafty enough, you could. Because everyone is tryharding in their OP 4.0 tanks, you could try to get 5.0 and uh, lol at their 4.0 tanks, though still it's a hard tank to kill. You could completely avoid it. A good one is British 6.7 to 7.0. They have some really good tanks there. We'll most likely find less tryhards. You could go to top tier if you have that. You need to be at least rank 2 and the lowest rank 2 aircraft is the German 109B1, which will probably lead you to a lot of seals to club. However, personally, I don't really like that aircraft. I don't find the German machine guns to do nearly enough damage. I would completely suggest to avoid naval because unfortunately it's not very much played of a game mode so you're gonna spend most of your time in the queue which you don't want you want to be in the game. I thought about doing air in it because typically air has really long games so you could spend a lot of time in game and 50% isn't that hard to get maybe if you grand pad but there is always the threat that you're gonna get knocked out real fast and you'll get like 20% battle activity so I've been hesitant to give it a try. I've been doing tanks. I might regret saying this Hopefully not. I've been doing 2.0 Japan because it's a very low battle rating, but you get a good enough amount of tanks that are ranked 2 with some really strong guns. Unfortunately, it's not the awesome 47s, but you do have the 176 with heat, which hull breaks stuff, and it's very much fun to seal club the unfortunate new players. British 3.0 is also a really good one, especially if you have the 57mm armored car. Also, German 3.0, you don't even need any special premiums. Just a nice lineup. Got a lot of Panzer 3s there, and Panzer 3s have a good penetration. But the general rule of thumb is you want to avoid where you know everyone else is going to play. Anyways, thanks for watching. I think that's all I have to in this. Feel free to ask me any questions or comments, or just rage in the comments if you like it. You could also come to my Discord and rage about it, because that's what a lot of people are already doing. But anyways, thanks for watching this video. Hit that like button if you liked it. Don't hit the like button if you didn't like it. If you want to see more, hit that subscribe button. I make War Thunder news videos every Sunday. I like to stream on Saturday, so expect that. I'm planning to start streaming on Twitch, although I just still haven't worked into my schedule. I was thinking about Tuesday. I was also now thinking I'll do it Wednesday and Tuesday I'll work on some sort of announcement video. Every Wednesday you can expect a video of some sort and at the end of the video I'll announce that I'm currently live on Twitch so you guys know I'm on Twitch. So hit that bell icon to be notified anytime I upload anything. Thanks for watching. I hope you have a great day and good luck grinding. Oh yeah, I got some bonus news for you. Apparently somebody data mined this that in the toolkit boxes you have an 80.9% chance to get one toolkit, 14% chance to get two toolkits, a 3% chance to get five toolkits, and a 0.1% chance to get 10 toolkits. Subsequently, to get the skins out of the first place boxes is the same as getting 10 toolkits, a 0.1 chance. I have shout out to my Discord mod CT Center who helped a lot with getting me to understand how this event works, even though it was confusing before the event even started. But good job, man.